Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Please ask a question. Why are we so focused on making sure people think that God is what's giving them the idea to be good or not? Why can't people just be good people? I'm an acting student. Okay. Do you think I have fulfilled the... I think that you're trying your best. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, yeah, You want yeah. a hot candy? Uh, no, thank you. Appreciate okay. it. But we're lifting up Christ. Do you have any objections to what we're saying? What are you saying? We're saying that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, which includes you, yes. includes me. We've sinned against the holy God, transgressed His law. We know God in our sin. We suppress the truth about Him in our unrighteousness. But the good news of the gospel is, is that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, that He lived the life that you and I should have lived. He lived it perfectly in the place of His people. And then He died in their place for all of their sins. That's how much God hates sin is that when it was identified with his son on the cross, he struck him down. But that's how much he loves to redeem sinners. Even those that would say, actually believe that, you know, I am a man, but I'm, gonna, I'm actually a woman. You know, even they can be redeemed. Even they can be redeemed because God has made us in his image, male and female. We have to give an account of our lives to him. He's the one that reconciles us to him by his son. That if you repent and believe on Jesus, you won't perish on the last day when he judges the living and the dead, but rather you'll have everlasting life because Christ didn't stay dead, but he rose again from the grave. Yeah. Oh. And so if you trust in him, you won't perish, but you'll be redeemed. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah. I, for the most part, yeah. For yeah. the most part, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what do you believe about Christ? I mean, I, I believe we live in a beautiful world. I've been baptized. Okay. And so are you trusting in your baptism for salvation or, or what does that no, mean? No, I, I live my life in the way that I promote Good health and humor. Okay. And wellness. Just the good and wellness of people. So, where did you learn that? Is my question, I suppose. Uh, I mean, uh, we look around in society and mm -hmm. it's just a lot of hate. Sure. And so, I try my best to live my life with. Uh, so, how do you define what good and evil is? What love and hate is? I think is? good is defined by the laughter and care of others. Yeah. Okay. So, now I have a good question for you. So, what do you say to the person who laughs and loves the the person that's being tortured or the person that's being abused I think Th would you define that as something that's good and no, lovely? No, I think that is uh, right. it's a polluted moral ground. Sure, but how do you know that? Well, I mean if the goal that they're, they're laughing and they're, they're engaging in it because it's hurting another person yeah. that means sure. there's something wrong with their moral code. It's about intention. Yes. Right, intention. but the thing is, as you were saying earlier, that the intentions or the, what makes you laugh is what it is that's lovely and good. But now we're saying that there's actually a standard outside of us that actually determines what the good intentions are, what it is that's loving, what it is that's bad, right? Uh -huh. So my question really is to get underneath how it is that you know right from wrong, good from evil. Because ultimately, if, and I'll say this and I'll, let you, I'll hear you, um, if right and wrong starts and ends in your cranium, then you actually give a just, uh, everybody a, a license and a justification to do whatever it is they want and not call it good or evil. Well, I mean, I think that's, there's free... Oh, you there's, can speak into the mic, I can't really hear you. There's the free will of it, I mean, I think that comes to the question, it's like, what's good and evil, and then people ask, like, why did God give us free will? And I think okay. it's, it's our own personal journeys as humans to understand what we believe is good and evil, and then let the people around us kind of do, I mean... It's, it's a hard question. Sure it is. And, and, and what I'd say is, um, now, I'd say that man is free to do it, what he wants, mm -hmm. and he will do what he wants. And man's will isn't free in that he can choose God. Everybody that is born under Adam is born with a nature that's contrary to God. God says that no one seeks after God, that all have sinned and fallen short of his glory. It's, he says this of all of us. And so that's why we're here asking these questions is because ultimately you have a conscience that bears witness to you of God's law because it's been written on your hearts. You know right from wrong because God has written it upon your hearts. And so we would say that ultimately what needs to happen is even for you to be reconciled to God in this point and in, in your reason is to come to Christ because in Christ that's where we find the standard of right and wrong. The standard of good and evil and if you don't have Christ then you actually don't have a reason for your reason you don't actually have a reason for anything that you do 
And so your will in and of itself isn't free. So if our desires are set to what we think is right, but we know that ultimately what's right and wrong isn't determined by what's in our brains, but rather by God's law, we have to come to grips with God's law. We have to come to grips with the fact that we're not good. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead, please ask a question. Why are we so focused on making sure people think that God is what's given them the idea to be good or not? Why can't people just be good people? Right, so, you know? because you're assuming, <laughs> you're really good at what you're doing, by the way. Um, so, uh, what I'd say to you, and then I'll let you respond. So, what I'd say to you is, is the reason that we're assuming that is because when you say good, when you say words like that, you have to give it a foundation for how you know what good is. If, go ahead. So, are you saying, uh, essentially, the, the Bible and God's word is for people who don't know what good are? And so they can create that foundation by listening to God's word. So, so like how you mentioned, people are lost. So then they, mm -hmm. they go towards God and all that stuff. So, yeah. so it's more like a foundation for them to understand what is good and what is bad based on His word. So I, what I would say, my response is that we all live in God's world, mm -hmm. and so we evidence that in our lives, right and wrong, good and evil, the Ten Commandments. That's what we would walk through. Is that we know it's wrong to lie, because God's not a liar, not because it's some neutral thing. We know it's wrong to steal because God isn't a thief. We know it's wrong to blaspheme God's name because God is the one who gave us life. These are just a few of the Ten Commandments, but what, the reason I go there is because ultimately that's written upon everybody's heart. You know, anybody from all different faiths and, and, and beliefs, they can see something awful happen on TV and say, that is wrong, objectively yeah. wrong, right? But it's not because the truth starts in here but rather because it's been written on their hearts by the God outside of them. Nice, yes. And so we would say that the Bible is the standard of truth because it's God's words. Because we know what's right and wrong and ultimately what salvation is because it's contained in his self-disclosure of himself gotcha. and the scripture. Okay. Well, That's thank you. I appreciate yeah. you for okay. your words. Okay. Have a good rest God, of your day. God bless you. you. Don't get sunburned. All right. And I hope y'all do well at the theater. Y'all are doing well. Okay. <laughs> These are your options, Christ or chaos, Christ or absurdity. Which one will you have? Which one will you cling to? Will you actually have freedom from sin and life? Or will you reject the God that you know? Again, what sin could be so important to reject the Creator, to reject the Savior of the world? Christ came to the world to die for the ungodly. You qualify, my friends, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And yet God, in His love and His mercy for humankind, doesn't leave us alienated from Him, fallen short of His glory, liable to judgment. He has made a way of salvation, and it's through the free gift of grace that is found in Christ and in Christ alone.